Good morning, listeners, and welcome back to the Internet Marketing and Business Solutions Radio Show with Ron Cooming of RCS Online Solutions, where we help business owners and entrepreneurs much like you achieve even greater success by attracting, converting, and retaining their ideal customers and clients to achieve even greater success using various Internet marketing techniques and methods. A brief outline of this radio show is that we have really two formats. Uh, One format is we bring on subject matter experts, uh, one or two, uh, that will talk about their subjects, whatever they're a subject matter expert in. But I don't want to say more importantly, but equally important to the entrepreneurs and business owners is they will talk about the trials and tribulations that they went through early on. And hearing that maybe will help you navigate so you won't have those problems. And if you do, hearing someone else that has had those problems may help you, uh, you know, not make them as difficult as possible. So uh, our first guest today is Dave Austin. And I'm super happy to have Dave Austin in. I've met him uh, as a guest. I've met him several times. Uh, he is a high-performance mindset coach to at least elite athletes and business professionals who, as a former world-ranked tennis player, uses his signature game-ready process that has proven to achieve championship results with his client base of players and coaches in the NFL, Major League Baseball, ATP, and with Olympic athletes, as well as Fortune 100 and 500 companies and and their senior executives and office personnel. Dave has written three international best-selling books, The Unfinished Cross, Listen to the Voice Within, Songwriting for Dummies, and Be a Beast, Unleash Your Inner Animal Instincts for Performance-Driven Results. He co-hosts the the popular radio show, Be a Beast, on AM 830 KLAA and lectures all over the world, including at the Golden Summit in the United Nations, Harvard, the U.S. Pentagon, and the Presidential Summit in Uzbekistan. I'll let him tell you about that. And in the World Women's Wellness Conference in India, living a rich life filled with many experiences, one of his most honored achievements apart from his 32-year marriage to his wife, Kathy, and raising four incredible boys together was back in 1991 when he received the Presidential Merit Award for the Grammy, from the Grammys. Dave, good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you, my friend. Oh, man, it's excellent uh, to have you on finally, brother. And I love, <laughs> look at all these accolades. Who knew about the Grammys, huh? Well, that was something that uh, I'm, I'm very honored that I was a part of. It kind of, you know, it's a, it, it's a real message in that for anybody out there that wants, you know, that's in business or, you know, striving to do something. You know, back in 1980, a good friend of mine, uh, Phil Ehart, who founded the Rock Group Kansas, a very popular band, we had a friend come down with uh, cancer and said, we w- we want to put on a – you know, we had to do something. We had to do something for him, right? And the record industry and the music industry said, well, there's nothing you can do, basically, as far as we, we had a meeting in New York because Kansas was selling a lot of albums at the time, very popular, and said, uh, well, you know, I remember the president of CBS said, hey, it's the president of CBS. I could get him or get a musician to donate their time. and It just won't ever happen. And Phil and I looked at each other and said, are we going to do this? And we kind of <laughs> just kind of laughed and said, yep, we're doing it. And in that very first one, we had all the major acts, you know, and it, it kind of turned the music world upside down. In fact, we even had Queen. I love the new movie out that uh, it's been out now for at least a month. But I love that movie because we we started this whole thing. And then Live Aid and all this other good stuff, we showed the model that it could be done. But so even in the face of, where everyone says it can't be done, I think if you have passion, you have a dream, <laughs> and then the most important part, take action behind it. So I, we did that. We did several of them, and then uh, the Grammys came to, to me and asked me if we would if we'd help start the Grammy Foundation, which is probably a billion dollars strong today. And uh, so we put on a couple concerts to help start that, and that's the reason that I w- received the Presidential Merit Award. You never know. You know, here's a 
you know, started my career, as you know, as a pro athlete and then kind of gone different paths, but uh, all kind of connected now in what I do today. That's huge. I mean, one, you, you had that entrepreneurial spirit from the beginning, but you went out to make a change and make a difference. And then you also kind of changed the way the industry, or at least uh, created another way, a unique way that the industry then went on with Live Aid and uh, We Are the World and all that stuff years later uh, to raise funds to help literally millions and millions of people around the world. Well, yeah, you know, it's funny because I look back at that and go, could two guys really just create that much change? Well, you know, any person can. And, again, I think it comes back to that we were willing to take action behind it in the face of no. And the fact that it's really fun, I mean, here's a funny story that when I said Queen was there. We had we had Santana. We had, you know, Loverboy, Survivor, Commodores. I mean, you know, just every – it was a major show. And – and uh I was emceeing the show, and this guy came up to me and goes, hey, we want to go on. We want to go on. I said, hey, you weren't at rehearsals. Stop bugging me. And he kept coming to me. We want to go on. I finally went to Phil. I said, who is this guy? How did he get backstage? He goes, put him on. I said, what do you mean put him on? He says, it's Roger Taylor. Look. And I turned. I hadn't seen the other people in the back, you know, backstage, and it was Queen. So I almost turned down Queen. <laughs> so <laughs> almost had a little blunder there. But it was really neat that they just heard the happening was happening, wanted to be a part of it. And they were there. And so, yeah, you know, I think that as you, you know, the, the message here is, is, you know, who, who are we to do this? But we did it. And now the music world is forever changed. So I guess I can always have that within knowing that uh, you can make a difference. Yep. And I love it. And that also, I mean, they told the Wright brothers that you can't fly. And Edison tried, you know, <laughs> rumor has it 10,000 times before he actually discovered the light bulb. So, I mean, in the face of, I mean, look at all the great things that have happened and the innovators just because they didn't accept that. And, and I think that has carried over into uh, how you help train uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, and even athletes to stay laser focused and, and, and just drown out the noise around them. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, to me, everything you said so far, even related to the music industry, supports everything else that is in your bio, but also, you know, what all entrepreneurs really face because, you know, our family, our friends, I mean, you know, they have a mindset that, you know, 97%, 96% of the population has a, 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 an ident- you, know, a, you know, a pretty identical mindset. And then the 3 or 4% that are, you know, the entrepreneurs, we kind of think different, but we're absolutely in the minority. So um, how, how can some people kind of like stay strong, like, you know, in, in the face of all that adversity? Well, I think the first thing is to know that we all have it. doesn't matter how much success we have. There are those voices. There are those aspects. When it comes to mindset, it's not like learning a phrase or going to a weekend seminar. It's a daily practice. That's one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about. I've been doing this for almost 40 years. And I'm so passionate about it because I've seen that it's continue. Even within my life, I have to every single day go through what I call winning habits to support me. So that when the negativity hits and all that, we all have it, especially if we're an entrepreneur. I mean, oh my gosh, you know, there's always those challenges that we need to learn how to turn those challenges into opportunities. And if everything is possible with the right mindset. But, it's, again, it's about a daily practice. I am doing something with the Pentagon and with the USO right now. We're coming out. We did these audio series called Beast Triggers for Business. And they're remarkable. They're an audio series because, you know, we have 250,000 uh soldiers transferring or, or transitioning into civilian life, and then they've got to face either be an entrepreneur or, or, or get a job, and it's a total different environment for them. So these audios are there to help them, support them in their mindset. Now, we didn't do it just for them. We, The businesses I work with, I, I have it for them also because I've really learned that it's consistency that is the key. And so I can't be there every day, but if someone has something they can listen to when they're driving to work, when they're driving to a meeting – all of a sudden, everything becomes more doable because you stay in that mindset. That's the most powerful tool you have. You can have all the great strategies. You can learn everything. But if you're not in that place to move into it, 
because there's some blocks within you, then you're going to constantly be challenged when these things come up. And they will come up. I don't care who I work with. And can I tell a quick little story? Because we're up in the New England area right now in this, right? A- absolutely. So yeah, little, we're in Louisville, which is just outside of Boston. Perfect. So I love Boston. I've had a chance to speak at Harvard, which is such a, oh, it was a fantasy of mine that turned into where I had the opportunity to do it. But there's this little known team called the Boston Red Sox. Have you heard of them there? No. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, we love them. <laughs> but I was with the manager this week. This week, it was kind of cool. I was with Alex Cora, and it had been 15 years. It was uh, back in uh, 2004. I was asked to come in to spring training uh, to work with the Dodgers. And Alex was our second baseman. And Dave Roberts was our center fielder, the manager of the uh, Dodgers. So it was really cool watching the World Series this uh, year, seeing and knowing both of them. But one of the things that, that they had asked me to do is come in and see what the culture was like of the team, you know, before I even spoke to the team. And this is the same thing goes for companies. So I want to relate whether you're into baseball or not. It doesn't matter. Both relate completely. And when I was there, all I saw was a lot of complaining going on because McCord had just bought the team. He hadn't gone out and gotten any trades during the uh, off season, so they were all complaining that that they were you know handcuffed. They didn't have any hitters that they went out and got. And I'm looking when I was first time after li- listening to this for two days, I came in and I looked at that team and I thought these guys are amazing if they only recognize it. So I told them. I mean, it was kind of my opening line is that, you know, we could go out and get the best hitter in baseball, and it doesn't matter. They'll be just as bad as each one of you guys if they come into this locker room. And they're like, what? And I, I said, stare into the eyes of the guy next to you until we find the hitter we're looking for. It was a little bit different. They're like, what is this guy? But they, I said, we, the hitter's within us right here, right now. And then I told them the story. I have a son who, my, my fourth son, was, is a miracle child. He was given no chance of survival. I said, when we go out to L.A., I want you to stare into his eyes, and then you'll find the champion with you as you see it in him, because he had no chance of survival, and he's alive. Well, the one person in that room that really took that to heart was Alex Cora. So when we came out to L.A., he grabbed, when I brought Daniel into the locker room, he grabbed, uh, Daniel stared into his eyes, and uh he goes, ah, I'm ready, and then went out and made Dodger history, fouled off 18 pitches and hit the home run to win the game. And so it's been 15 years since I've even seen Alex, and at the baseball winter meetings this this, uh, this week, I had a chance to bring him and, and uh, Daniel together again 15 years later because Daniel's now 20. So, you know, that was something that I'll never forget. But if we can find – there's a champion in us, and I have a saying with, with – the work I do is that champions are champions before they're champions, meaning that you don't wait till you win the championship. Let's say you have in your business, you have this goal and you're really striving for it. You got to get there. But if you're just so into the results, you're going to freeze a little bit. You're not going to work and, and, and be as, as productive as you can be. If you decide right now, it's already here and you get into the process of being it and enjoying the process, all of a sudden the results just show up. And that's a key element. So I say champions are champions before they're champions. Be the champion today. Don't wait to win the championship because you may never win it. I love it. And that's such a positive message. But I like how because some people may have self-doubt and they don't know if they're really cut out for it. And what I'm hearing in your message is it's already in you. You just need to bring it to the surface, fine-tune it, and make it and rock it, right? Yeah, you know, when you say some people have self-doubt, I think everyone has self-doubt. I've worked with some of the best CEOs of big-time companies that everyone goes, oh, my gosh. But guess what? At the, at the core, we all have self-doubt. I have self-doubt. So you need to, you know, Dr. David Groder made a, uh, I love this statement, uh, a Gruder, actually. He says, we, we perform at the level of our wounds, meaning that those, those things inside of us, that, that, that are there that maybe, you know, have wounded us through our, our life, something that keeps us back. Well, we're not able to go past that until we face it and put it right out there in front. So I, I believe that we all have doubt, but it's how you deal with doubt. It's just like we all have fear. You know, you can, you can fake it that you don't, but no, we all have it. And I think it's awesome 
to have be, be on the edge a little bit every day. You know, courage is not the absence of fear. It's how you move through fear and nerves and, 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 the, and the doubts and, and, and all that. We all have it, but we also have, as you mentioned, the courage within us, the animal instincts that are there for us. That's why the book is called Be a Beast. That's why we have beast triggers is every animal that we studied has some instincts that are remarkable that help them survive and thrive. And the truth is we all have it within us. But our minds, which can be our greatest gift, is our greatest distractor. Many of us have our minds aren't working for us. They're working against us. And so by learning triggers of, of when you have those doubts, when you have these adversity, and then you can just tap into something that's already there deep within you. And so it's a constant reminder. And the more you do it, the more you become it. I love it, man. Again, so positive. If somebody is um, uh, just starting out in the entrepreneur uh, mindset, because our listeners, we kind of we have a lot of different listeners. Our reach is literally like 1.7 million all the way down into Rhode Island, all the way past Worcester, up into southern New Hampshire and southern Maine, uh, all of most of New Hampshire and southern Maine. So uh, we have a pretty big reach, and in that reach, it is. Um, you know, we have a lot of people who are in business, in marketing, looking for tips to, you know, excel in, in their space. People who are in business, who are in a business as an employee looking to maybe leave and create their own business. Other people who are already in business and have different levels. So they may have just recently started. They may have been in business for three to five years and they're looking to scale. Can you give some advice and tips on, uh, you know, maybe each of those different levels or one that uh, covers uh, all of those levels on what people can do to kind of fine tune their mindset and, and, and just achieve even greater success. A- absolutely. And first of all, congratulations. Just on what you just said, look at what you're doing. You're affecting people's lives every day. You're reaching out, whether it's a million and a half, two million, three million, whether it's one, you're having impact. So first of all, congratulations on being a game changer yourself and just by having this show and, and helping people open their eyes. That's the key is awareness. Awareness is the key. So there's a couple of daily habits that I feel would do when I call winning habits that will right now make a difference in your life. First thing is, is when you get up in the morning, don't go right to your phone. Don't go right to the internet. Don't go answer a phone call. Don't do anything until you start the day or the day is going to start you. You're going to have a lot of things take place during the day, especially no matter what level you're at in the beginning or three or five years into your career, you want to get grounded. So you are the, you're creating a life by design rather than by circumstance. Most people just react to their conditions every day. You sit, take the time, get there fast by going a little slower. You'll advance so much quicker. So when you get up in the morning, before you jump on anything, get yourself whatever your routine is. Like for me, I first shower I, I have a cup of coffee. I get quiet. And in that quietness, I allow myself to kind of move myself into the day and decide how that day is going to go. So then when the, if you call it the craziness of the day starts, I'm in command of it. Too many people are just in a fast and furious, oh, got to go, got to go. Oh, got to get up, got to. And, and they just, they're just going so fast. I call it too busy to be successful. So first of all, start with, if you have to get up 15 minutes earlier or even a half hour earlier, it will be a really good gift you give to yourself. Next thing is, is at the end of the day, have a little notebook by your bed and think about three wins of the day. Sometimes when we're out there in life trying to create something and we're moving forward, we get, we get knocked down. But there's always wins. And what you feed it will grow. What you starve will die. So why don't we focus in on those wins? It's amazing. This, and what this information, if you're willing to do it, is a total game changer. Because you start celebrating your victories along the way because that's what it's about. To do big things, take many small steps. And if you can celebrate each step and you start working and seeing in living this way, Who you are as a person, who you are being, is what's going to create your success. Too many people don't even go to the fact of who do I have to be. And so, you know, 
a support system for you would be, like I say, write down your three wins. Put down the date. Start living into your victories and it's, and stop running from your failures. If you call them failures, nothing's a failure. I have bombarded many times. That's part of growth in, in, uh, in anything you do. And, and the thing is, is that if you look at it, if you face struggle or you're in struggle, if you can find that this is the strength, this is the thing that's going to make you better. If I look back at my life with some of my accomplishments, I've accomplished them because through struggle, I got stronger, and it made me better. I didn't necessarily want to go through that struggle at the time, but if I reflect back, I go, my gosh, I would have never been able to accomplish that if I hadn't been able to have some of that struggle to make me stronger. So you want to position yourself, and it's how you face everything. So start your morning right, end your morning, end your day right. Every day is a brand new day. I love it, and 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 that has been a, a large part. Not you know that I'm super successful, uh, but a large part of, of my day. I start my day off. I listen to either Jim Rohn's or um, Les Brown or someone similar. The first like twenty minutes, I get up, like you said, you know whatever you do initially for the first five minutes, and then I you know I, I get a cup of coffee. But I will sit down and I will listen to them and get my mind set right. And uh, usually I'll write out like the 10 things I want to accomplish before 10 a.m. the night before. So my mind actually when I'm thinking, when I'm sleeping, you know, it's already in my mind. And when I wake up, I have my 10, 10 by 10 list. Uh, and then I listen to, to them and get the day started. And I started that about a couple of years ago. And I have had so much, I've been so much more productive because there's a huge difference between being busy and being productive. Uh, so I, I thoroughly agree with that, and, and, I, and I really um, I really like that. Is, is there a follow-up on that that you, you'd like to add? Well, yeah. I mean, first of all, congratulations on doing that. You're already knowing it because, you know, I mean, I get a little biblical on you for a moment, but it's done unto you as you believe. Well, what does that mean? Is that your belief system shapes your whole reality. And by doing what you're doing, you're feeding your subconscious mind, which makes all the decisions really in those crucial moments. You're feeding it to believe that you can do it because of what you're doing and that constant listening that you're doing in the morning and that constant, um, the way that you described it is what's giving you the ability to step out and keep moving forward in a positive direction. And most people, you know, I've worked with a lot of major league baseball players. I've had four players become MVPs for their team, learning how to have the right mindset. Cause if you think about it, you know, look how much failure they have. If they go, if they, if they're successful, you know, three times out of 10, they're in the Hall of Fame and they're a multimillionaire. And they're yet, they have seven at bats, you know, that they're having to live with a failure, supposedly failure. But if they're focused, that's what the, my biggest challenge is keeping them in that positive frame of mind. Same thing goes in a business. You know, we, we might, we might have, you know, uh, many no's that come to us. But if we stay in that mindset from what you just described, you're going to thrive. That's why we have the Beast Triggers for Business audios. The exact same reason. So people can, in the morning, listen to, to what I developed with Tony Bodo, who I think is one of the sharpest minds out there in business. Brilliant man. And then learning how to use these Beast Instincts so that you start owning who you are. I want to tell you one other quick story about that, uh, that because it's Christmas time. It's something I always think about at Christmas time. Because my grandfather had two uh, gentlemen come to him. They were in deep hurt. Um, and one of their brothers, one brother was an accountant, the other one was a dreamer. And they were millions of dollars in debt. And they came to him saying, we're doing this. And the, and, and the funny part was the accountant was all worried, which you can understand. You know, this is in the 40s. So million dollars of debt is, even you know, it's bad today, but think about it back then. But the one guy was so passionate about his dream. He was so positive about the impact it would have. He was so captivating that my grandfather said yes. You know, and everyone needs a yes in their life. And if you stay in that, and, you know, this gentleman who was so captivating to my grandfather, and my grandfather said yes, which kind of, you know, today I think back, we wouldn't have Disneyland without that yes. Or maybe Walt would have found it from another another um, person but my grandfather was in a position he was the executive vice president of 
uh, Bell Telephone, and he said yes to sponsoring. Well, AT&T was the largest company in the world at the time. So once Walt had the number one company, the rest of the companies fell like dominoes. And so why I relate this to Christmas is that when I was four or five and six, Walt would send us um, this big box of presents for Christmas. So we would always have our Walt Disney Christmas on Christmas Eve and then our regular uh, Christmas. But the thing that really threw me when I was younger is that I would get these presents and, you know, and have a card. Thanks, Walt. I'm thinking, who is this crazy guy who is giving me presents and thanking me? <laughs> Couldn't understand that as a kid. But it has always stuck with me as my grandfather always told me about Walt's passion and staying active within his dream. Rather than just having a dream, he kept moving steps in his dream. I love it. And uh, he also, didn't he start that with like a loan and $750 or something and, and turned it in to the Well, I don't dynasty? know that he could have. He could have. I don't know. The the part that I understand, no, is that they were in debt. And, and but this other part that maybe I missed out on, you know, to say is that the accountant brother was really stressed over that debt. Uh Walt was, like, excited. He kind of even made a comment like, wow, you mean that many people believe in us? <laughs> that they would give us this kind of money? He had a different outlook. And and then once he got my grandfather to say yes, now he's got sponsorship money, right? And then the sponsorship money is what really opened up the whole world for him. But I knew that he had to, he did have some loans ahead of time. I don't know how much or whatever. I just know that he was in debt because of it. But Walt was excited about it, where his brother, from the story that I have, was stressed over it. And and and, and the truth is, I think we we you know when I think of that story, I think for myself, I have both brothers within me. <laughs> you know, I have yep. the the dream, I have the action that I'll take, but I have this other side that kind of goes, oh, but. Oh my God, we're you know we're in debt, we're in this. So I think I have both brothers living in me, and I'm sure somebody on this radio show might might go, you know what? I think I got both brothers living in me. <laughs> Excellent, uh, Dave. We got about ten, twelve minutes left, and then we have to go to break. But I just want to let the listeners know that all all episodes, including this episode, are archived on the uh, radio station's website, WCAP 980 AM, uh, as well as rcsonlinesolutions.com in about two days. So you're hearing some great information from Dave and uh, Dave Austin, and, but if you're unable to write down um, the, you know, write down some of the, the nuggets that he's given us and will give us or his contact info. Please know that you can go back to the archived episodes and uh, listen to this episode again as well as uh, his contact info. Dave, we do, like I said, have about 10 to 12 minutes left for this episode. Uh, can you please first give your contact information so we give it now and at the end? And then I'd like you to kind of take over and just, you know, talk for a bit on whatever it is that you want to convey to the listeners and if you have any type of like a, 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 an ebook or something you'd like to give away please feel free awesome well thank you thank you again for having me on the show um, I uh, really respect and honor people who are going out there as I said earlier and you're doing that so thank you so my company is called extreme focus so it's um, you know you can go to my web page extreme focus Dot com. The book is called Be a Beast. You can go to beabeastbook.com. You know, you can also find it on our other webpage. But even if you want to reach out to me personally, I'm going to give you my email address. This is my personal email address. D-A-A at extremefocus.com. So D-A-A, dog, apple, apple, at extremefocus.com. Love to, you know, if you have questions, feel free. I'm, you know, one of the biggest gifts I get every day is to be able to answer questions and help people move forward uh, through maybe a new view, maybe a, a new eyelid, so to speak, to see things a little differently because the difference is right there for you. So one of the things when you're going to give me a free flow for a moment, I'm going to talk about, because I'm talking about how the beast animals 
you know, how we have in us. So if it's all right, I'll give a real quick, give you one example. The crocodiles have been here. They were here with the dinosaurs, lived on the same grounds, fed with them. They're cousins with the dinosaurs. But you know what? I haven't seen a dinosaur lately. Maybe you have. I haven't. But crocodiles are thriving, 23 different species. Why are they thriving and the dinosaurs didn't? Because the crocodiles became adaptive to an ever-changing environment. So write this down because your environment is changing constantly. With technology nowadays, it's changing. So you have to be adaptive as you move forward. And the thing that the uh, the crocodile, crocodile could do is that it got to where it could take its heartbeat down to three to four beats per minute so it could relax and get in a very relaxed state. And if there was no water or no food for a while, it could just kind of rest. And then it also formed a skin that could, when the great freeze happened, it could maintain its body temperature inside. The third thing it did, it, it created an eyelid that when it's in really murky water, it can see and still eat. Remarkable. Maybe things you've never thought about. So how does that relate to you right now? We call the crocodile RESPA. So let's go over what RESPA means. R is relax. In any situation in your life, if you let emotion get in front of your objective, you're gonna, you're, you're not gonna meet your objective. So you had, so the very first thing you need to do is take a big deep breath and relax in that moment. In a relaxed state, then you can go to E and evaluate. And you're now evaluating in the moment rather than letting the emotions of a past event get in the way of what's happening right here, right now. Then the S is in, in, in that, in that, after evaluation, you can strategize. How do you move through this? And then from the S, you go to P, patience. Remember what I said earlier? Get there fast by going slow. Patience is a virtue where you just can evaluate it. It can be in a millisecond of patience, or it could be a day. But from there, you go into the A of RESPA, which is act. Now you act with boldness. You act confidence. And I will tell you this. You want people to follow you. Be clear on the value you're bringing. People follow clarity. And the best way to get there, RESPA, is a great, great answer for you. And I practice it all the time. So in the morning when I have my quiet time, I'll actually say RESPA. That's part of what I gave you is that design to, 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 to help your life. And in that, I take a deep breath. So now when I'm in a crucial, crucial situation and I'm faced with something that I, my nerves are really going off the charts, I have doubt, I have that, I go RESPA. And just now naturally my body takes a deep breath. In that deep breath, all of a sudden, it brings me right to this present moment. It's a gift to, for you to use and watch it, how you react to things when you start. But you have to, it's a daily practice. So that's one of the animals of, uh, of the beast that we, uh, I wanted to at least share with you on that and that principle. Uh, hopefully that will be whether you ever read the book or get the audio series right there. Live that and you're going to have a better life. I love it. And those are actionable uh, pieces of advice that people can actually start right away, as were uh, the advice you had given earlier when I asked you. Uh, Dave, I love it, man, and I'm so grateful that you were able to come on and, uh, you know, bless us with your uh, expertise and, and experience. And we're down to about three or four minutes, and then we uh, have to go to commercial. And, and I'd really, if there's anything else you'd like to pass on to people, I, I'd really like to just, you know, let the people hear from you and not me at this point. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, I guess the, the key is, is some of you might say, well, will he really respond or whatever? Take the action. Because if you don't take action, the answer is no. If you take action, you now are in the ballpark. You now have a chance to step to the plate. You now have a chance to take a swing. Without taking a swing, maybe you might say, well, oh, my gosh, I might miss the ball. Well, at least you got a chance to hit the ball. You're in the field. So step into the arena. And, and uh, here's a statement for you, too. Be odd in excellence rather than normal in mediocrity. Think about that every time when you go, well, I don't know. Can I do this? But those who achieve anything of any kind of magnitude are willing to be a little odd, be a little different. I told you the story of Phil Ehart and I. We were a little bit different. But look what we created. We created something that now the music industry, I mean, so often when something happens, the music industry comes and, and raises millions of dollars. And it's something that was never done. 
No one ever thought it could be done. You know, someone has to run the four-minute mile. Notice Roger Bannister ran it. And then within months, all of a sudden, you know, it was being run because now they could believe it. We, I guess you would say, ran the four-minute mile in the music industry. After we did it several times, people went, you know what, this can be done. And then even larger events like Live Aid, and you mentioned We Are the World. It was really fun because we had put on an event, and then We Are the World happened, and half the guys in there were wearing our, our, our jackets we gave them. It was really fun to see that. And no, you can have that impact. I'm not special. All I am is recognizing that if I take action behind those dreams, even when it looks like I... I might not make it. I just have to keep taking the action. And, and, you know, there's a lot of faith in there. There's a lot of trust. And then adapt as you go when you see a, a direction might have to be a little bit to the left. You might be so much closer than you even realize. I hope I get a chance to talk to you if this has motivated you or if you are interested in the beast triggers. You know, reach out to us. Use these. You know, these aren't made just to you know, to to have them out there. They're because I've been doing this for 40 years and I understand what it takes to make it through and be successful. So take advantage of anything that we've learned, I've learned through the journey. Excellent. Thank you so much. Everyone, you've been listening to Dave Austin and uh, Ronald Coming on the Internet Marketing and Business Solutions Radio Show where we help business owners and entrepreneurs achieve even greater success by attracting, converting, and retaining their ideal customers and clients using various Internet marketing techniques and methods. Please stay tuned as we will be giving you our next episode. We'll be giving you three tips to increase your digital marketing in 2019. Thanks, Dave.